I'm Scott Moore, and I'm a performance engineer. I help to make software and applications faster, better, more resilient. Join me as we take the performance tour. from Drupal which which I build websites on yeah WordPress not so much but that's a that's a feature functionality issue but what drives my my tool selection is really features and functionality and this is where the open source community has not built a peer compatible solution with the commercial tools commu community they have pretty much ignored the whole issue of monitoring, so oh, that, that's handled by another tool. Uh, the whole issue of analysis, oh, that's handled by another tool. The whole issue of uh, reporting, oh, that's handled by another tool. Well then, okay, you're not necessarily now comparing one tool to one tool. You're comparing one tool to a family of tools. Right. And that is where I have an issue. If you say, I'm going to replace Pick your commercial tool that has a full feature set with an open source tool, which does not have the same feature set. And, and I know why this is occurring, because most of the people that are making this, this decision don't understand where the value is added in performance testing. It's in analysis. And they don't understand the data points which are required in order to do a full analysis, which include heavy monitoring of the resources and the interfaces associated with that. It does you no good if your solution only monitors Linux boxes and you're in a Windows environment. It does you no good if you need statistics from your router and your tool doesn't support a simple network management protocol interface to get it. It does you no good if your back-end target is a mainframe and you don't have a Telnet interface that you can actually go in and type command line options and collect the results off the screen and create a data point. Mm -hmm. so, so this is where my, my antagonism towards open source performance tools comes into play. They don't have the feature functionality that the commercial tools have. They're not as mature. They don't have as many protocols that they support. So, oh gosh, I, I need to do SAP Thick Client. Oh, well, the open source tool doesn't do that. Oh, I need to do Citrix. Oh, the, the community's not big enough, so nobody's built a solution for it. And people ask me, well, what does that mean? Well, if you pick an open source tool and it doesn't support Citrix, are you going to go and build the interface for Citrix? I have yet to meet a person that says it's got to be open source who opens up the source and makes a modification 
to support a protocol that is not currently supported by the open source tool, but is supported by a commercial tool. And, and by the way, when you pick an open source tool, the tool is not the product. You, the person, are the product. Your customer doesn't expect any less value from the open source tool use than they do from the commercial tool use. So now I have to become an expert in the open source tool that generates load, the open source tool that collects the, the monitor tools, the monitor resources, the open source tool that aggregates all the monitor and timing record data, and the open source tool that does the reporting. And by the way, as a labor services provider, so you know, I, I work for Tech Systems, I manage the performance engineering group. From a labor services perspective, this is wonderful. It's actually more billing to do this. But from an engineer perspective, I want efficiency. And the open source tools don't bring that efficiency to my point of delivering value. And that's where my measurement of efficiency is. Not in simply the production of load as a load thrower. So, so Scott, I apologize. I've taken over your little video here and I'm ranting back and forth and you haven't said a word in quite a while. So I'm just gonna shut up now and turn it back over to you. I knew that would light him up just brighter than Christmas Eve. <laughs> Thank you, James. And now let's go back in time for another classic barbecue review. This time it's from 2006, Dickie's Barbecue near Dallas, Texas. Let's see what I think about it. This is uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit that is uh, right outside, it's about an hour outside of Dallas. One of the things that we've noticed is that uh, Dallas and the surrounding area are able to take Texas barbecue, traditional barbecue, and turn it into like a fast food franchise type place. And most of the, the problem with that is that most of the sides turn out to be more like cafeteria style food. Um, barbecue was just a little bit mushy on the pork, and the same way with the, with the brisket. Not as much flavor, no smoke rings, very little smoke. So I'd probably give this place about five and a half, five, somewhere in that ratio. So we're looking for much better grade brisket than what we're at. But uh, still a good place to stop by and get some, something really fast.